Okay, this this is tying back to the hell thing. One of the questions about it that really flaps atheists and understandably so, and probably flaps most of us too, if we think about it. There seems to be a totally disproportionate punishment versus why you go to hell. In other words, if I don't believe in Christ, why should I go to hell for that? Okay? I mean, people don't represent the gospel rightly. What they say is, you sinned, somebody had to pay for it, so you should be punished. Christ paid the price, so you go to heaven. That's true, but that's only part of the story. Because the rest of the story is, the only reason you don't you go to hell is because you don't believe in Christ. You do not go to hell for your sins. So when they sit there, and this is really common with the Ray Comfort crowd, oh, did you ever steal a pencil? Did you ever tell a lie? They're, they're skewing the whole question of the gospel. And then, of course, they say you have to repent to be saved, so they're not even giving the gospel right. This is a very common mispresentation of the gospel. Have you ever stolen a pencil? Have you ever told a lie? Well, now you're guilty of sin. God is holy, so you you have to be punished. And of course, the clear idea behind that is you should go to hell. But Jesus Christ paid the price, so you don't go to hell. If you repent of your sins, that's not the gospel. If you repent of your sins, that's not the Bible. And believe in Christ. There's no ant. Believe Christ paid for your sins and you are instantly saved forever. That's the Bible. That's the gospel. You see how there's stress on sin. Excuse it. The only reason anybody goes to hell is because they don't believe in Christ. John 69. That's the Bible. Not Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron and all those stupid people like them. Paul Washer. Idiots, all of them, they don't know the gospel. Make Christ Lord, weep tears of repentance at the altar. And then, because you feel bad about it, you get to be saved. No, nothing you do can get you saved. Sorry. Those people are spitting on Christ. They, they can't read the Bible, they can't say the gospel right, and nobody's being saved by them. The gospel is one thing. Christ paid, you believe, you're saved. That's it. No stress on your sin. Stress on what he did. And you have to consent to what he did, because what he did is a gift, and you can always refuse a gift. Let's stick to the Bible. Okay, but in sticking to the Bible, let's go one step further. Yes, you sin. Yes, you deserve punishment for your sins. So yes, he paid for those sins. And yes, you believe to be saved. Forget how you feel about them. It matters how God felt about them. Okay, but the only reason you go to hell, because he paid... The only reason you go to hell is because you don't believe. John 69. Concerning sin because they don't believe in me. That's the only unforgivable sin. Which, of course, all those idiots with their fancy, dancy Hollywood production false doctrine videos, they're, they're missing that point. They stress sins, you sin in your body, and you should be punished, and God is holy, and Christ paid. So you should repent of those sins and be saved. No, it doesn't matter whether you repent. It matters whether Christ paid, period, only. So, 
What does he say? John 16, 9. Concerning sin, because they don't believe in me. Why is it disproportionate? Why do you go to hell simply because you don't believe in Christ? Why hell? And this is something that ought to be said in the pulpits or on the street corners, and it's not being said. Hi, if I send my son to pay for sins, and you don't believe in him, then the punishment due you is for rejecting my son. Not for the little petty things you do wrong here. I'm God, I'm not affected by what you do wrong here. You are. Every time you sin, you basically stab yourself. I'm trying to save you from that outcome. My son took on humanity for that very purpose. Yes, it's an offense against righteousness. It doesn't personally hurt me. But it is an offense. It's a juridical issue. And if you care at all about me, you're going to wish I got paid. So, okay, I get paid. I imputed the sins to Christ on the cross. He wanted that anyway so he could express his love for me. And he did that. And it's done. Finish. The results go on forever. And the result is that now the cost of you who sinned is my son. Not your sins. Your value went up on the cross. So your sins went up on the cross. An exchange for your sins is his righteousness. Second Corinthians 5.21 So the price of sinning in the form of rejecting believing in my son is that you're rejecting divine righteousness. You're rejecting it. It's not a question of whether you sin with your puny human righteousness. It's a question of whether you reject my divine righteousness. Whether you reject my son. And I'm sorry, hell is too small a penalty for anybody who rejects my son. He went to all this trouble for you. I give you your first breath. I create your soul at birth and give you your first breath. I underwrite your entire existence and will keep on doing it even if you go to hell. And you're going to reject my son? All you have to do is believe he paid. I believe he paid. I'm the one who says it's okay. And all you have to do is agree. And you're in heaven forever. So it's not costing you anything. But if you reject it, yeah, you go to hell. Because you're rejecting my righteousness. You're rejecting the whole shebang. You're rejecting my son. You're not just committing some stupid, puny human sin. You're rejecting my son. Just like he's warned everybody. John 69, concerning sin, because they don't believe in me. That's not a puny sin, honey. You're rejecting God. Well, if you reject God, what else is there to do? If you reject God, you don't want heaven. So what kind of place does God have to make where God is not, so to speak? That's the antithesis of God. That's the antithesis of the righteousness that you rejected on the cross. What, what, does he have to, what does he have to create? What else can you call it but hell? That's why you go to hell. You don't want Christ. You don't want God. You don't want his righteousness. So, fine. Here's a home alone that you chose instead. Because what's the antithesis of God's righteousness? What is that going to look like? What is that going to feel like? What kind of universe is that? Well, it's called Lake of Fire, and that's where you go if you never believe in Christ. John 16, 9, it's not about your puny human sins. He paid for those. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Peace out.